Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's on the bench. Welcome back. Part seven now with this lovely kit. And you can see here we've got a lot of stuff just placed together for your delectation. So there we go. You can see we have what started like a spitfire here. So a little bit of confusion. Um, I built up the engine, as you can see, I've now painted it. I built up the engine and I built that up after, I think it was after I filmed part five or five. Maybe after I film part six, I can't remember. So people are watching part five and thinking, hang on a minute, didn't I just see the engine built up and everything? So yeah, um, I put that in as like an extra because I've noticed that on YouTube, there's quite a lot of people doing these. Um, well, a few have flashed up. I haven't watched any of them. A few have flashed up and um, basically we're all doing the same. So I thought I'd just jump out of it, do the engine. It gives, gives, gives people something a bit more interesting to look at and gets me more hits, basically. So that's why I did it. So... Um, we have the engine here attached to the bulkhead on its bearer and as we can see I will bring the camera down closer because I realize you guys like it closer I've left it up because the blades are so big so you can see the engine coming out of the bearers there and it is gorgeous it really is nice now there are some errors um, I hadn't noticed them but my followers have noticed the cam covers are way too tapered you got far too much taper on them going from the side and something else I didn't pick up on, which um, I'm kind of looking at it and thinking, hmm. One of the guys, I think it was Wellington, picked up that apparently the port magneto does the spark, the exhaust side spark plugs for both sides, and the starboard magneto does the inlet spark plugs for both sides. And what he basically said was they've got the a conduit attached to the starboard magneto. But this is the first time I've looked at it actually since he made that comment. And I think what they've done, what happens is you've got the conduit coming out of there and it goes across the back of the engine down like that. So I think what they've done is moulded it on there. So it's kind of incorrect in that that's a plas piece of plastic attached to that and it shouldn't be. But it looks correct. Yeah. I mean, it looks like that's going up behind there. If you look at the um, the engines in the Border Models Wigged Up Wings Lancaster, you'll see on there that there's a, a cable going across that feeds both of them, and then this one feeds feeds them. So uh, there we go. Um, other than that, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, some somebody I wish I wish they'd respond because they somebody I can't remember now who someone I think they sent me an email. Uh, commented they put the engine together and they had a massive gap somewhere and it was like a one millimeter gap and I don't I can't think where that would have been unless they had a short shot or something so but it's gone together absolutely beautifully um, apparently something looks wrong here as well according to the experts out there and this is the problem with something like this Spitfire murdered engines you know Lancasters there are millions of experts out there and when I say experts I mean experts when it comes to some stuff, you've got like your experts, if you know what I mean. But with Spitfires, I mean, there, there are so many knowledgeable people about them. And there's so much reference material, books and, you know, it's just piles and piles and piles of it. So anyway, um, so there we go. So that's the uh, engine and the engine bearer looking very, very nice. So we've got the fuselage, which you've all seen already. And then... We've got the wings, you saw these in part six all painted up and everything. I've now cut off the gun doors, the gun cover doors. I've had a question said to me, apparently people have, people have asked, or somebody has asked, apparently you can't fit the engine, the engine, the, the bomb, <laughs> what am I talking about? Rawr! The gun covers, you can't fit them if you install the guns, the, the cannons mainly. There is an issue with the guns as well. If you fit the cannon, no problem at all. As they say in the instructions, and I should have had the page marked, I'm sorry. Here we go. As they say in the instructions, this thing here, which I can only assume is like the motor that feeds the ammo into the cannon. If you fit that, it says only fit when building gun bay open. It gets in the way, but I've got another idea for that. Um, and then also on this one here, only fit when building gun bay open. This is the outer gun. 86. The outer gun, it's that piece there. And if I can just show you, if I can make the, I'll take that one off. There we go. 
you can see that that part there that we're talking about that is um, F56 in that side uh, and so what I've done is marked it out and made a groove in the bottom so it kind of sits over it it needs to be a little tiny bit deeper because it just doesn't quite go down perfectly but we shall see um, but basically so if you want to display your gun bays closed and then be able to remove them I think that's going to be one way to go now obviously you might want to use magnets and stuff which I can't do on this because it's an out-of-the-box build um, because that's them off so but obviously that won't fit over that motor when it's in there and I'm glad Airfix have done it that way because the other option would be to have that motor in there and because of the thickness of the plastic in comparison to the thickness of the aluminium in real life so if that teardrop there was made to fit very closely over that motor if it is a motor then the thickness of the plastic is like a hundred times thicker than the aluminium would be in scale so the two choices is to make that motor under scale so that fits make it the completely wrong shape so that that fits make this scale thickness which means it would just fall apart in your hands um or just have it fitted and then fit the gun cover or don't what i intend to do is fit the motor things in here what i intend to do is fit it and come here is fit it and just clip it in because it will just clip in because we've got our I've been spent ages on these these things are full of sink marks and I've just given up they're, they're awful um, I say it awful probably is a bit strong they're, they're, they could have been better they just got a lot of sink marks in the top of them and uh, they're not that easy to sand out so that's gonna go in there look at that because the camera's on it doesn't want to play ball there we go Okay, and then we can literally, there's a slot at the bottom of there, there's a tab on the top of the cannon. So that we can just drop down in there. Sort of press it down onto the top of the cannon. So that sits in there like that. Okay, this is all just base painted, it's not fine to paint. So that goes in there like that. And then obviously you can see the gun cover won't fit. And it's way too much to be trimming out. So what you can do is just with your cannon glued in there, you can just remove that. I don't know if you could park it in there. No, I doubt, very much doubt it. No. I wonder if you could park it in there <laughs> and have the gun cover shut. I don't know if you could park it in there. No, you'll have to keep it separate. And then your, your cover will actually fit on then. So that's, that's what I intend to do. Um, I may end up just gluing all the covers shut, we shall see. But one thing is nice about this kit, it's really, really nice, is how beautifully these covers fit. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for better. I mean, look at that. They are absolutely stunning, the way they fit. Um, really, really pleased. Really, really, really pleased how nice they fit. They probably even fit better than the Tamiya ones, to be honest, or as good. But there you can see how lovely they fit in there. Obviously you can see a massive difference because of the different colours. But if that was all just grey plastic, you'd see that it's really, really gorgeous. And that one there is being slightly held up by that by that thing. So um, there we go. But uh, yeah, really, really nice. So, on to work. What are we going to do? If you remember we got all this done, oh, I've, I've taped this lump of plastic to the bottom because I kept snapping that off that little tube there. So, um, there we go. Right. So let's get all this out of the way. Let's zoom you in a touch. Bring the camera forward, actually. There we go. Right. So, um, we'll get all those doors out of the way. We don't want them, do we? We'll get them over there. So the guns... Generally, people would paint their guns with a gunmetal paint, or whatever that's why it's called gunmetal. Um, I think in reality, these, these guns have a bit of a brown tinge to them, um, like a brassy, bronzy sort of tinge. So I might give them a, a wash as well. But basically, what I'm going to do is use pencil lead and get them the colour that I want them. So if you haven't seen this before, you'll probably enjoy it. So I'm just going to grab a piece of paper to stop making too much mess. Grab a pencil. 
I should have been better prepared, shouldn't I? Let's just get rid of some of that. Right, let's get rid of that wood. Then I'm going to grab a coarse sanding stick. Here we go, this will do, this skinny stick will do. And just rub the pencil on there. And get some of the graphite off. And then using a really crappy old brush, I think this one should do it. Get some graphite. Get one of our colours. I left one in the wing, didn't I? But it's still in there. Let's get this one out so I don't forget it. And then just brush the graphite on. Just like so. And then we can just keep brushing. We could actually probably, something I've never tried. I seem to be lately the man of cotton bud. Yeah, you can kind of give it a bit of a polish with your pencil lead. And get yourself a kind of metallic-y black looking cannon. And as I say, that's great for a base. It's the base to work from, it's not the final sort of colour. So um, that's that one. We'll do the other one. In fact, no, we'll do one of the machine guns. Oh, by the way, I've removed some material from this, this tab on the bottom that fits into the wing. It's a very, very tight fit on my kit. So um, have a look at that on yours. Don't go forcing them. You might damage the wing because it is quite thin. And then obviously we've got to do some detail painting on these because we've got the the bullets going in the top and we'll use our good old metallic colours for that so there we go so we've finally done something that doesn't really cost anything other than well, if you class a pencil as having value I don't know but uh, there you go so there's your, there's one of the machine guns, one of the 303s. Again, that's got that metallic sort of luster to it. Now what I should probably do is give it a brown wash, just so the brown goes down in the corners, because Steve sent me a picture of some of these guns, and um, they were very much, they, they looked kind of very bronze-like. So um, sort of very metallic, but very bronze so uh, I'm going to get the rest done, then I'll come back. There's no point in me uh, sitting around here doing that with you watching. So I'll, I'll get the rest done, and then I'll come back and we'll see what they look like in the wind. Okay, we're back. Dirty board means oils and paint and stuff and dirty stuff. So we've got our wing there, the wing box is all painted as you saw in part six. So I've now painted up these bullets, which I don't very much like. They're all right, but it's just, it's just kind of, I don't know if you can see it, they, they've just moulded one row of bullets. And I kind of wish they'd moulded like another set underneath. But it's just one row on a sort of black, flat back gown and there's quite a gap between them. So it's quite difficult. I, what I did, I, I actually made up a, 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 a sort of very thin mix of black and gold. Painted it first. Then I brushed over the, the gold to look like a... This one's better actually. To sort of look like the, the top ones are shiny and you should see some gold underneath you know to imitate the brass and then it tells you the instructions to do the actual front part of the bullets in a black uh, i looked online and they look very dark gray to me so i've done them in a very dark gray and then sort of rubbed them so you could see a bit of chipping showing through them like that so that, um, and then they've gone over with a black wash so i don't know may, i may just glue all these covers up to be honest because i'm not I'm not really over the moon with how it all looks and everything. Um, you know, it's 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 lovely. It's all there, and I wouldn't really expect anything more for a for a kit, especially at this price point. But um, you know, it's just it's it's a little bit 
basic and I'd want to add some cabling and some detail and stuff and obviously this is out of the box so I'm not going to do that but we can see how these guns are going to look uh, this one here will go in there so that one will slide into there and the barrel down push it up in and that will just sit up in a bit further forward there we go so that's that's how that gun will sit in there you can see it from underneath there and from on top and then we've got another one here which is the other way around that's right and that one's going to go through there just push that up there it kind of needs to bend the gun it's a bit awkward Just to prove they do go in. There we go, it just clips in there. And you can see here, if I can get close up enough, you can see those sort of horseshoe saddles clip into the holes in the sides of the gun. And that gun, that, that's not going to come out of there, that's not going anywhere. And then you can see if you put the upper wing half on, you can see how they're going to look. I'll put the ammo bay in there as well for the cannons. Obviously, I haven't got the cannons in, you've seen them. But that's how that looks. So it is all quite nice, I guess it'll break it up with the camouflage and everything. But um, I could always just carry on and, and go like this and then if I don't want to I could just glue the doors on. So uh, we shall see. No real point in fitting the guns at all, I think, if you're not, if you're going to glue your covers closed. Because you can't, I mean, you, you actually you can, you can see down in there, you can see the ends of the guns. So but then if you're going to put the red decal strip over there, then why bother? Um, so that's basically... That's it, that's what you can see. So, it's quite nice, I guess. We've also got some pipe work to go in and everything as well, so uh, we'll get that in. But, um, just to show you, the guns can go in and out. Just pull this one out. It's a bit awkward with great big fingers like mine. There we go, that one's out. And then we just pop that one out of its mounting. Give it a little twist because this this gun, the the, the sort of more inboard machine gun, um, the actual bay is narrower, so you have to sort of twist the twist the gun around. It's quite awkward. There we go. That way, I, I was twisting it the wrong way because the you've got the um, ammo belt there. You've got the ammo belt there on the gun, and it's actually wider here than the actual bay itself so you've got to just sort of twist it up let it go in and then twist it back up but um as you can see it's easy to put them in and they can go in after the wings are on as well or after the wings are built up should i say as can all of this um the one thing i'm not sure about is that forward pipe i've tried the sideways pipes These pipes here, I'm not sure about this one. I'm not sure if I can get that in after the wings are. I don't remember if I tried it. Yes, I can. So we can leave that out until the wing is all painted and everything. Well, until the wing is all assembled, should I say. So, uh, yeah. Right, so here we go. Um... Part five went out today in real time. You're seeing this a few days on. But part five actually went out today. Uh, a few of you have said you got your kit and everything. Talking about the riveting detail on the fuselage, one side is a lot heavier than the other at the top end. This is the area I'm talking about. And a couple of you have sent me photographs. And I don't know if you can see it on there, if you can make it out. But the, the rivet detail down this side of the fuselage is very soft and very heavy. And here it's very light or almost non-existent. In fact, a quick sound and it's gone. It was actually the, the, the riveting detail on the spine is gone. So um, yeah, you can see it's because it's, it's not slide molded. The actual rivet indentation, instead of being, you know, a rivet indentation perpendicular to the surface, it's at ninety degrees. So obviously there, it becomes, you know, like a great big oval. 
So I'm going to fill them in and redo them, I think. Um, right, so moving along, there was nothing else. Oh, somebody mentioned about the tail wheel. I did explain uh, what I did with the tail wheel. I don't have it here. It's obviously in another, it's in the bag. There's a bag of parts here as well. Um, I have, I, I've had to do some work with the tail wheel uh, in case you've missed it. The, um, the leg, so the tail wheel leg, you can see how much we've been working on. The tail wheel leg is this part here, which is the actual, you've got the actual tail wheel leg is molded as one piece and then you've got that little piece that goes on the other side there. This is much too thick, this side, and the tail wheel won't actually as physically fit in the gap. Okay, so you've got to carve that out. And you've also got to carve out the length because the wheel's like too big, it won't go in there. So, um... So that's something else worth remembering. But also, I did want to fit the tail wheel earlier because obviously it's going to be very vulnerable and get snapped off and it will Im impede cleaning up that seam. This part here just basically goes in like this. I shall show you. Goes into the tail wheel bay and pushes into a bracket, into a, a, like a bracket in there. Okay. And the actual tail wheel leg can get it out come on out the actual tail wheel leg here the width of that tab the width across where my fingers are now needs shaving down it's too thick so make sure you check it before you get your fuselage together otherwise you're probably not going to be able to get it in or maybe even snap your tail wheel off when you're trying to push it in um i can't think of any other questions and comments that were made as i said there was one about haven't i already seen the engine yes you have uh, so these these videos are in sequence that video, the engine one, was the last one I made. So, yeah, it was after part six. So we're going to get on now. I'm going to get these gum bays glued in. So they're going to go in just like that. Make sure we've got the right sides. Because they have got a bit of a tape on them. So we can take, take them out. And all we need to do is get a drop of our extra thin, thick stuff. And we'll put some inside there. And what will happen then is it will run down. Oops. It'll run down on the inside and stick it in. We'll put some in there, we'll put some in there, and then just drop that in. There we go, they're in place. And it still falls out, so that was good. <laughs> um, just get some glue on there. Hopefully what will happen is the glue will run down. And it doesn't really matter because the upper wing will hold them in. It won't go through there. So you don't even need to glue them if you don't want to. So what I think I'm going to do now is look at the instructions. So we've done all that. We've done all that. We've done all that. We're not putting the guns in yet. We can put them in after. Okay, so they want us to glue this to the fuselage first and then fit the wing. Now, reasons why I wouldn't do that, reasons to do it. Let me just go off camera and have a little think and have a little mess around. Something I am going to do is put something here. Because when you actually come to fit the upper wing to the fuselage, there is no flange or anything. It's just like this. It's just It just goes like that. So there is no positive location holding it in place. Now we've got bits of detail and stuff. And when we do put the wing on, if we just imagine we if we imagine we've put the, the fuselage is glued to the lower wing. When we do this, okay, we can get into there before we put those radiators in the bottom. So we could put something on the backing there. We don't really want to put anything in the backing in the wheel bay, look, because you can see the seam there. So we're only going to be able to sort of do that area there. But I want to get something in there so that it's got sort of positive join. Um, but I'm guessing it's, I can see probably why they're doing this. If we do get an issue with that joint, you can always cut the pins off of here. The location pins. There's one there going into that. Um, it's just everything else is the gun base locating it, I guess. So it does fit beautifully. So um, it's kind of, I don't know. 
it fits so well I'm kind of tempted to glue, glue the wings together now I never think about it so looking at this um, thinking about how I'm going to do this whether I'm going to put the wings on or not and obviously like I said I want to get a tab in there well the only area we can really put a tab is in this area here this is the wheel bay this area here so I don't want to put anything in there this is the flap area so I don't want to put anything there so it's basically between where my two thumbs are now and then we can't put anything there because that chute comes right up into the wing in fact there is a a cut out in the wing for it to go into bloody cough so anyway I've been looking at this and how this goes together and I'm thinking all right so when we put the fuselage in we've got the wings in let's take this one off so it doesn't fall off put the wings on like that we've got that area there where we can put this plastic card in to give it something just some, some strength but then we've got these radiators going in underneath the wing here so they're telling us to put them in after we've done all the um, after we've done all the uh, fit, fit it all up and everything. But I'm just looking. I don't want to fit them in now, but I'm just looking. They come up. They've got like a box in them, and they come up into the wing as the real thing does. So I want to make sure that when I put my plastic card in there, I'm not going to be fouling that. So I've got some parts off the sprue. Get a bit of a mess here. Too many sub assemblies. So I've got some parts off the sprue. So we're going to build this one up. So we've got. This box here, this is absolutely bloody wonderful. Look at this. They've got a one and a two in there. This is really well engineered. One and a two and an arrow facing forward. So we've got the two with the arrow facing up and it's got a P marked on it. So it's two with an arrow up and a P. So that's going to go there. All right, arrow up, point at the two. And then we've got the one, which is that one there with the arrow pointing up. We've got one. And P on there, so it's number one port, so that's the front port. Two is the rear port, two P is the rear port. So that is how it's going to go together. And this is wonderful. This is such a good design. Okay, so that's actually the radiator there built up. Now I'm just looking at this. Okay, I'll just look at that radiator, the front one, number one, is sitting higher. You can see it doesn't go down line. And I've just had a look on the instructions, and that's how it is. So let's just get these glued together. So we'll just keep our fingers away from the seams. There we go. So that one's gone in there. We go and then this one is going to go in in the back face with the arrow pointing up so we'll go across the bottom so then that is in there nice and solid so now we've got the front and rear face of our radiator so that's lovely right and then we've got the bottom here which is part G10 again we've got a P uh, the P is going to get covered up by the radiator, but it doesn't matter because we've got the P in there, so we'll know what side it is. And this is going to go... Okay, so one is the back, not the front. They've got an arrow there, and that is pointing at the back by the look of it. Or is No, that is the front, sorry. That is the front. So the arrow is pointing forward. So we've got a couple of ejector pin marks here. That I'm going to have to get rid of. We've also got a bit of a sprue nib ledge on there, which I want to get rid of. A little glass file is absolutely brilliant for doing that. Okay. So the radiator is going to sit down in there like that. Just wonder if I can get away without gluing this together and I can paint the radiator separately. And then we have these side pieces here going in. So that's G, that one's G8 and this one's G7. So they're going to go in like that. And that is our underwing radiator complete. And this is the port side. 
So that's going to sit up in there. It's a very tight fit. There we go, that's gone up in now. Okay, what's happened there is the... Wow, that is a tight fit. That is a bloody lovely fit actually. There's two ejector pin marks on the inside of there, you cannot see them, so I'm not going to worry about them. We'll have a seam here to deal with, we're going to have to deal with that, with some filler or whatever. But um, I am going to glue that radiator to that base, because it keeps wanting to come off. Yeah, that all fits together absolutely beautifully. In fact, I'll glue these sides on as well. Just, just put a spot of glue in there. And I'm just going to put a spot, I can put some glue in there, in those tabs inside. And then I'm going to fit this into the wing and let it dry in the wing because um, that way I know it's going to fit in there because it is a very, very snug fit. It's this side, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> wow, that is really, really nice. The way that's going together, that is lovely. So we'll just let that sit there. And then while it's in the wing, I'm going to run some cement along that seam. And then we can let that do its thing. Doesn't matter if we get glue oozing out because we're going to fill and blend that seam anyway. I just want to push that side in slightly so that can sit in the wing and dry like that and I know that when I fit it it's going to fit perfectly that is lovely right so basically what I'm trying to do is see how much plastic card I can put in to support this wing so okay we're clear we're clear there as long as I don't use anything too thick I would have to, I'd have to use over a millimeter you can see in there We've got plenty of room so I can put a piece of plastic card from where's my pencil I wore my pencil out on the guns from there to say there we can put a piece of plastic card in there and we can it's not worth putting anything there because we'll have that there Yeah, that's going to be glued to the wing there and then the fuselage is going to be glued to the wing there so there's no point i'll just put something here because i just want something to to give it some support i don't i don't like having just butt joint especially when it's something this big so um that's what i'm going to do and then i can transfer those marks onto this wing and do the same on that one so I should get some plastic card and get it cut out. Okay then guys, lots going on here. Once again, I'm probably going to confuse some people. Um, <clears throat> looking at putting this together, I'm kind of not enamoured by the Airfix method of gluing the, gluing the fuselage to the wings before you fit the upper wings. Once again, it's this big alignment thing. Now I've got the bulkhead fitted into the fuselage here. Okay, so imagine you've got that glued in there and it's absolutely solid. In fact, what we'll do, we'll tape it in just so that we, we know it's all solid and everything. Okay. Right, so that's gone in there like that. You've got your fuselage in there. Now the trouble is, even though I've got my... 
spar if you remember this I, I did a couple of if you haven't seen them I did a couple of extra videos about fitting this wing together I completely changed the build sequence to make sure you get the spar centered and you can see that this bulkhead fits into that spar it has a very very small amount of play now that's all okay but when you come to fit the wing you can see okay I can get a gap so if I go and glue the fuselage to the wings now and then find it's out I'm gonna have a problem so what I'd rather do is glue the wings together like so ignore those tabs for a minute we'll talk about them in a second glue the wings together like that okay so it's all held together and then drop the fuselage in and as you can see we get a perfect joint on both sides and no play so the wings are actually centering the fuselage rather than the rather than the spar. Okay, so it's all about getting everything centered and square and everything, and just as any model. But unfortunately, there are no real massive positive locations. And this is what I was saying before. If that spar is out, because it can be like a millimeter maybe out, um, if that spar is out that way then your fuselage will go in that way and then you'll be stuck. So I would seriously suggest gluing the wings together first and then drop your fuselage in. And if you do have any issues then with this, you can just trim some material from the end of these legs here. That'll allow that to drop in. And then if your spar is a mile out, then it will sort your fuselage. So if you have gone on and done it and the spar is over one way, you're going to get around it, around it, around it, around it. So, basically, I'm going to glue the wings together. Now, these tabs, I've cut them out from plastic card, and you can see they're shaped in such a way to miss the wall of the wheel bay here, and also to miss that rib there. So, that's why they're that shape. And they go like that, and with that all pushed down together, okay, then we can drop the wing in, drop the fuselage in, and you can see we get a nice joint and it's 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 keen together now and without those without those radiators in the bottom we have a, we'll be able to get in from behind and get some glue in there and really get a nice strong joint so that it doesn't all start cracking because my fear is if you've got it like that it's gonna crack um, so yeah and also I think I'm about putting some riveting down here because there's no riveting down there obviously because the fuselage has been molded that way they couldn't put any rivet in there so I may put something in there, we shall see. Um, and also remember that that is designed to fit and the fuselage will sit, will step up above the wing with that fairing stepped up just like it is there. You can see it's stepped up from the fuselage and it will also be stepped up from the wing the same way. So I'm going to glue these wings together <clears throat> and then come back. I've made up both the radiators now because We've got this seam work to do around the edges, so I thought I'll get them both done out of the way and then I can do the seam work, seam work at the same time. And also I can take them in place, not only can they dry in position, but it also saves that little tube keep getting snapped off. I think I'm going to end up drilling it out and putting a piece of brass in there because I've broken it off twice since I turned the camera off last. So, <laughs> pain in the bum. So, um, I shouldn't have fitted it really, but uh, I did. So I'm going to get these wings glued together. Uh, it's going to be a nice job because... We can clamp it here, we can clamp it back here and glue everything down nice and solid and then fit the fuselage after. So once again, I'm not doing it as Therfix have suggested, I'm doing it the other way around. Um, how you wish to do yours is completely up to you. You may think I'm talking a little rubbish, but uh, I haven't put the landing light in yet. It doesn't matter, it can go in afterwards. So, um, so I'm going to get this glued in. And then we're away. You don't want to watch me glue in the wing in, do you? It's pointless. Um, on this side, unfortunately, the wing around the gun bays is a bit baggy. You can see there it's there's a gap there, at least to be, because it's going to have to be clamped down and bloody things. It's going to have to be clamped down and glued to get it to fit nicely. But um, it will go down, it'll be lovely. And then I think we'll start looking at those gun bays. I'd just like to show you what I've done here. This is crazy. Um, so I've only really glued the trailing edge and over the gun bays. Reason being, you've got this piece that we put in here, 
and that runs all the way along the back of the wing and there's a groove in the upper wing that it sits into so scrape the paint out of there and then slot that on okay and clamp it all down there and then we can clamp this trailing edge and it's it's, it's quite solid because it's um it's all like solid walls in fact i'm going to put another peg in there okay and that'll that'll hold that all down nice and tight and in fact now that we've got that in i can come along with some extra thin and run it into there and just in case anything didn't quite get glued it can capillary along there we go so that's that's held solid in place um, i haven't glued any of this around here and none of the leading edge i haven't run, run a wing tip or anything if you remember on my kit i don't know if yours is going to be the same this area here where the gun bay goes down it's basically where this part here goes down onto the edge of the gun bay here mine was all baggy and lifted up so what i've done i've got a a, a rule going across the wing with another rule underneath it because it steps down and that's all holding that in place you can see where I put the glue on it's removed the um, the silver paint unfortunately so I'll have to paint that gun bay again but that's not an issue um, but basically I'm hoping that's all going to be good and, and stay like it is um, I'm hoping it's good enough to just hold it there I don't want it springing up again afterwards, but we shall see. What I'll do is after, after it's, if it's glued in place and it's held, then I'll go around the whole gun bay with some glue and just spot it in, just to sort of lock it down. I've locked it in here. Um, and that's basically that, really. I was going to go around the wheel bay, but I thought I'll leave that until we've got everything in position, and then I know that it's right, and I might have to do some jiggery-pokery. But with it like this, we can see that I can fit the fuselage on, and it goes on lovely so that's all cool right so i'm going to leave that to dry for a few hours um and then i'm just going to go along the leading edge and then i'll do the same on this on this back half on this other half sorry and here we are this is the next day this is like 24 hours later and we're back at the bench um so last time you saw i had one wing done i've done the other side uh, i had all the clamps on here so now what I've done is glued, I'm working sort of backwards to the front. Um, I've glued the, I clamped it here and then glued the back of the wheel bay. So I clamped it first and then glued it to not get any glue oozing out. So that's all done. And then when that's sort of kind of cured, I've then sort of pulled the wing down because it all kind of, it's a bit weird. It's got a little bit of distortion in it, but it's all fairly thin and soft and pulls around all right. So... So basically this, this wing on this side was kind of like this, okay, kind of, sorry, this wing on this side was kind of like that, it was like flat and, and lifting up at the front. This wing was kind of like this. So I had this one sort of flat and I had to pull the front down and this one was all like this and I had to pull the, the middle down and sort of flatten out a bit. But we've got there in the end and I'm, I'm sort of going along and every now and again I'm test fitting the fuselage and making sure that everything's going to fit okay um, and the, the, the wing joint looks fine but I'm a little bit concerned about the size of this step I'm pushing the fuselage down here as tight as I can and you can see the step there on that from that panel going down to the wing is quite large so I guess the thing to do is, is scrape and sand that away but that's not a problem um, the other thing I'm looking at we've got a We've got a bit of a step here on the trailing edge. I don't know if you can see on my fingers. It's almost like the fuselage needs to go forward a touch. We've got no real gap down here on the back. I mean, there, there is a small gap. But I'm kind of looking up here and I'm wondering if they intend it all to go back. So I'm kind of, I don't know really what to do. I've sanded a little bit of plastic from the wing in this area here show you in this area here because what I found was the radii in there didn't exactly match the radii in there so I just sort of sanded that out a bit to, to, to sort of allow the fuselage to go a little bit more forward which helped um, but I'm kind of not really sure what to do here because obviously the more forward the fuselage goes because of the shape it's going to wedge itself in and get a tighter joint in that wing root. Um, and I can really, really push it up and close that gap at the back. 
but I'm kind of wondering if that wing wants to go forward a bit more and I'm thinking I'm gonna have to before we do anything I'm gonna have to oops, have to tape all this also heavy with clamps on I'm thinking I have to tape all this up and check the fit of the engine cowlings because I don't want to fit the fuselage and then find that the engine cowlings don't fit over these wing roots down here so it's going to be a kind of bit of trial and error so you guys can see how I get on and then you'll know whether to ignore that little step there and ignore that gap there or not. I'm really not sure what to do. So we shall see. Um, but certainly the only thing I can see that's stopping the fuselage going forward is here. Well here and across here. I can close that right up and we still have a bit of a tiny bit of a step there. So I may actually just remove some material from here or remove it from the fuselage rather than the wing um, and then maybe the wing will pull back a touch. But the thing is these flat panel lines are lining up perfectly so I don't know. I think like, like I say I need to tape it all up, clamp it all up and then do a test fit of the engine cowlings with these little wing root, there's going to be wing root pieces going in here and just do a little test fit and see how it goes but um, I'm kind of overdoing this guys because I'm trying to see the pitfalls and where it might all go wrong and I've been speaking to John Alec tonight, John Alec's modelling bench, he's, if I think of it I'll put a link below the, below in the, um, in the description uh, he's got a YouTube channel, he's a great guy, really good modeler, um, very, very soothing, very relaxing voice and has a great way of building. Um, he's doing one of these at the moment and I was saying to him about being careful with these wings. I kind of don't know what to think about these wings. Nothing seems to, I mean the wing tops go on with a sort of positive click, but only after you've got everything else in. So I'm kind of thinking, if you made any mistakes in putting the lower wing together, when you fit the top on, it's going to cause misalignment. Um, and you know already I've talked about the spar. And I'm really, I'd, I'd love to get another one of these. Maybe Airfix would like to send me one for free. I very much doubt it. Um, what I'd, like to, I'd like to try and build one of these wings up without gluing anything inside. Without gluing anything at all. And then gluing the upper and lower wing halves together and letting them determine where all this goes. Because I, it just, I mean, I'm looking at the back of it and it seems like this trailing edge is lower than that one. If you look at it like that, it, it kind of, but then it's also flexible and movable and adjustable. It's like, I don't know what to do. It's really, really weird. I know I'm messing up Airfix's build process and going the completely different way about it, but in doing it this way, I'm able to clamp the wheel down to get the, the sorry, the upper wing down to get the wheelbase glued. And I'm also able to get glue in here, into these, these frames around the wheelbase and into these spars. So that's something that you wouldn't be able to do if you had the fuselage in the way. So I'm kind of pleased about that, but you can see I've been pulling the wing forward I don't know if you can see in there, if I take this peg out of the way, we've got a bit of a step there, the same on this side, where the upper wing, the upper wing has a longer cord than the lower wing, and I'm not at all worried about that. It could be that the wing is supposed to sit up above all this, it could be that we should have put some plastic card on the spar, or, I, I don't know, but um, I, I did say to John tonight, I said, because we were... <laughs> I was on the Ice Queen 7's um, live stream and I, we were talking about drink, alcohol and I said, because he's building one of these and I said to him, don't have a drink before you do this wing because, nah and what am I doing right now? I'll just show you what I've got here there we go, I'm having a Coors Light <laughs> which, is that a Coors Light? No, it's Coors, isn't it? It's not a Coors Light is it Coors Light? No, it's just a course. Um, I'm having a course, and which I love. Before you all start, um, and I probably shouldn't be doing this with a beer because it's just kind of what do you do? What do you do? It's also it's like a big. It 
it's just like it, 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 nothing nothing is is positively going together like I say I think I'd like to build one again and put all the wing internals in and not glue any of it and just glue the top so all that inside can just float around and then see what happens because I mean I don't even know yet if the the hedral is going to work out good because if that if I if I've glued that spar in and I've clamped it slightly off and I've got one wing like this and one wing like that there's nothing I can do now I mean it, it is all quite I mean that is the beauty of it. It's all quite soft and flexible. I mean you can see here I can I can <laughs> you know I can move it all around and change the dihedral and oops so it broke then. But um yeah I mean that was that was cool. That all that broke then was that that rib there cracked away from the main spar. So that's okay because when we do it together it's gonna pull it all in. But yeah. So you can see it's all quite sort of oof. I don't know. Um, I think it's going to come out absolutely fine. I'm probably going to eat all my words, at least I hope so. So let's see. Okay, so next day now, left it overnight with all the leading edge all taped up and everything. So we've got the leading edge all glued up. So all's good. I just hope and pray the dihedral is correct side to side. I've stuck it on its undercarriage and it all seems to measure out okay. If anything, we've got a little bit of a twist in it, but we can pull all that out because it's all, like I said before, it's all flexible and then I cracked it, didn't I? Um, so placing the fuselage on the wing, okay, with no bulkhead or anything in place, you can see the fit. When you look at it vertically, the fit is lovely. Let me put the other light on. I forgot to put the light on for you. There we go. You can see the fit is lovely, but when you look at it from the side, we've got quite a step. Um, so I think I'm going to remove some plastic along there. Just, just sort of chamfer it off to relieve that step. I mean, there, there, there should be a step there. Uh, but not, you know, I I, th I think this one's a little overpronounced, to be honest. But like I was saying, like you'll see in my Lancaster, having things overpronounced is a good thing sometimes. So um, I want to sort of reduce that step. So I'm going to scrape some material and sand it from there on both sides. And then I'm going to put some rivet detail down as well, because there's no rivet detail on at all. What I found in trying to reduce this step, if you see I've got it fitted now with no bulkhead and it goes right down. What I found is with the bulkhead in place, what I found was it was holding off. So we could slide that in there like that. Okay, have that all fitted in there. And what I found was it was li lifting it up and making that step even bigger. And to a certain extent, it still is to a certain extent. So what I've done, I've come along with, um, with a scribing tool just to point and gone around the front, I need to clamp that bulkhead back to the spar, hang on, well, I can't get a clip in there now, so what we need to do is take the bulkhead off of here, this is how I did it originally without the fuselage in place, just put that in there, okay, get a peg in there, hold it in place, and then we can come in, hold the bulkhead back and just with a sharp point, scribe along the wing, because what I discovered was this recess that the bulkhead sits in wasn't deep enough, wasn't long enough, should I say, not, not, it was deep enough, but not long enough. So there we go, that's come off of there, right. So what we can do then is come along with a knife and remove the plastic from where we've scribed and just make that recess wider, if you like, wider this way. So longer, if you're looking at fore and aft. Um, so that the, the bulkhead can go down in, because as it was before, it was sitting up on. Now, I'm looking here, and I've noticed that the, the recess for the spar, you can see there's lots of room there, so the spar could have gone back more. So that could be what half the problem, but I haven't moved, moved anything like that from the front. So, But the spar is controlled by these ribs, which in turn are controlled by the position of the wheel bay, with that wall there. And where those hooks go through at the back, and you've got a ledge that it sits on there. So th this is this is what I'm saying. I, 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 some of you are going to accuse me of moaning and whinging and going on and everything. This is what I'm saying. There's no <clears throat> positive location for anything. So if they'd have put, I mean, if the designers are watching this, what well, it's easy for me to say now after the event. But I think what you should consider on your next release 
is if you're going to have features like this, perhaps put like a semicircular cup in the wing, in the bottom of the wing that they sit in, and that will give you your left and right absolutely solid position. So you can glue that in place and you know you're right, and also have something to glue it back against so you know you're right. And then if the ribs don't fit around it, then we trim it, you know. But th the trouble is that the rib goes in and it has no location that way, but it has lots of location that way. And it's probably the only real solid location of the whole wing is where those hooks go through, thinking about it. And they've pushed the spar too far forward. So, you know, I think the way to do this, like I said, I'd love to do another one and have a go is put the whole wing together and don't glue any of the internals. Just glue the outside and leave the inside. James Mower said about it, about having a fully floating wing. Just leave everything floating around because it's just, it's, it's not easy. But now you can see that that bulkhead goes down in and it sits down in that groove. So that's what we're after, is having that bulkhead sitting down a bit lower. In fact, I may even remove some more plastic to get it to just to go down a bit more. Um, and all we need to do to do that is quite easy. It's just come along with a, a rounded blade and just scrape material from the bottom of there. And then go in at the ends and just scrape out what you've just scraped off. Do the same over here with your hand underneath in case the blade jumps off. And then you can just come along at the back of the blade and just take out what you've scraped off. Just like so. And let the bulkhead sit in. And then of course if you want to you could just come along with a sander and remove some material from the bottom of the bulkhead. That will also help. Make sure the back is nice and flat as well. There's some of the jet depart pin marks with the raised edges. And um here we go. So that's going to fit in there. Lovely. Nice and solid. Just like that. Okay, and then our fuselage can pop in over it. We'll let the tape out of the way. Just like so. Tape it in position. And it's, it's, it's sitting down nicely now. So we can we can work on this wing root fairing now. Get that slimmed down a bit. And then we're away. Right, so I've done this side now. As you can see, when you look at this side, which is untouched, we have a, a great big step between the wing root and the wing panel itself. On this side, when I push the bottom up in there, you can see we have a much nicer, much finer join which is a lot slimmer and more representative of what's up here. So that's how I've done that. So I'll show you what I did. So the first thing you can do is call me Dr. Nige because here I'm going to prescribe. I'm going to prescribe the rivets and the and the lines. And with, di with this, I'm not using any scribers, just with this sharp tool, I'm just going to run down this groove, run down this panel line and pick out Pick out the panel line like so, just to make sure it's there. And then with these rivets, which at the bottom, you can see at the bottom of here, these rivets are quite faint anyway because of the moulding restrictions. So what we're going to do is make sure the tool is facing into the plastic. If you push straight down on that one, then on the end, you'll just end up going out. So into the plastic, make a dot. And then here, make a dot. Here, make a dot. Make a dot. That one's very faint. And so are these two here. These are very faint as well. Make a dot. And make a dot. Okay, so now you've what you've done is you've pre I call it prescribing. Oops, a bit offline there. It's just basically sharpening up. The rivets and the panel lines so that they can be seen when they're sanding and if they start to disappear you can go over them again so i'm going to use this old stick here sorry i didn't use an old stick there i'm going to use my knife come along and just scrape
I'm taking more off here than back here because that's where we need to take it off is up there. Okay, so just scrape some material away, try it in the ring, see how it looks. You can see there we've still got a fairly large step. So we'll just scrape away a bit more. like so until we get something resembling what we're looking for okay and I can see here we've got like a, a raised area here it's a lower area on the wing but anyway what I'm going to do <clears throat> is make it look right there we go now we've got a pretty even step all the way along so once again, we're going to replace those panel lines that we will have lost on the edge. Just like so. Make sure the rivets are all there. They're all within where we've scraped. So they're all good. So I come along with this old sanding stick. And just blend out where we've scraped. Feather it out, and you can see that what we did when we scraped it, we sort of put a chamfer on there, and now we're just feathering it down so that it becomes a constant radius. And if you are fairly new to the hobby and this frightens you to death, don't worry about it. It's only a lump of plastic. You can, as long as you take your time and you think about what you're doing. And, you know, if you don't take the plunge one day, maybe maybe do some of this on a cheaper kit. But uh, if you don't take the plunge one day, you'll never you'll never gather up the, the skills and the confidence to do it. And without the skills, you won't get the confidence. That's the only reason. I mean, a, a guy that's highly skilled with a TIG torch will go hack it into a classic car body, removing stuff. Whereas a novice would be scared stiff to touch it because it's worth thousands of pounds or even hundreds of thousands of pounds. At the end of the day, it's only a plastic model and you've got filler and glue and plastic card. Okay, so we'll see how that looks. So now you can see we've got a fairly even and pretty much reduced step going along there. So what I'm doing now is blend it out. So I'm going to use this worn out old skinny stick just to keep feathering that edge away. Remember guys, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's going to be covered in matte paint. If you're weathering it, you're probably going to put chipping all over it. Where the maintenance and the pilots have been standing all over it. So it doesn't need to be perfect. we go I'm gonna get my old scriber here and just come down open out those panel lines get them to go over the edge same on the back there okay and then just gently take away any sharp edges or whatever and then with the rivets you can see we can see them there because we've got the sanding dust in them just come along and push our tool into them once more just to make sure we've got something there to go back to later. And there we go. Let me fit that in there. We've now got a nice little step rather than that great big huge thing that was there before. If anything I'll take a bit more off the front here but I won't bore you with that. There we go. So that's looking a lot more accurate, a lot more to scale. 
No, I don't really know why I've had to do that. I'm, I'm just hoping I haven't done anything wrong. But I mean, I it physically can't go down any lower because I'm I'm pulling the bottom of the cockpit tab into the top of the wing root. So you know, and and if you push the back up there, that's that's the fit you're going to get. So there we go. Happy with that. Right, let's move on. And so there you go. You can see now we've got. I don't know if you can see it. But we've got that edge all riveted now. <clears throat> if you can make it out, I doubt you can. But, uh, there we go. So how did I do that? Right. Piece of six mil masking tape, and then put a line here. I've done it in red so it sticks out. Every three millimeters, I've made a line. I measured these here. These are roughly three millimeters apart. So I thought I'd do the same along there. Um, I had a look at some reference pictures. It looks like they do have a lot of rivets or screws or whatever they are along here. So um, we're just going to put this masking tape on here, roll it out, just like so, and then we're just going to place it down, and obviously we want to get a sort of a reference point, and my reference point is having, look at that, it's gone straight down in the right place, this line here of rivets should line up there, okay, so it does, it lines up there. Now it's a little bit close to the edge, so I'm just going to pull it in a touch, just pull it in a bit like that. This doesn't need to be perfect because at the end of the day under a coat of paint when it's all chipped and washed and everything it's not really going to show up that much but you'll, you'll, you'll see it, you'll know it's there but no one's going to look at it and say oh you've got 27 rivets there and it should be 24. Well they might but if they do just tell them to go away. Um, <laughs> so we've got that close to the edge there Perhaps a little bit too close to the edge. You have to be careful with riveting when you're close to the edge because it will just, it will just literally just make a great groove in the plastic, especially plastic like this. This is, it's not as soft as the uh, blue tack, as I call it, but it's still pleasingly soft. It's lovely to work with. It's one of my favourite plastics I've ever worked with. It's really, really nice. It's not quite as nice as border model. It's a little bit softer than border model, I think. And it's more kind of... Ooh, let me think about that. The border model is more like... It's tougher rather than harder. It's... Yeah. Of course, we all moan about soft plastic when we have got soft plastic. It means everything is... We can flex everything around and pull everything about without anything cracking. Right, so we've got that on there like that now. Okay, so now we can... Have I, am I been working off screen? No, I haven't. Let's move that camera. So, all I'm doing now is with my, my little prick, <laughs> um, come along and just right on the edge of the tape, where the red, that's why I've used red so you can see the edge, I'm just going to make a pin prick. If you notice, I'm going this way. I'm not going down for risk of it. Just the, 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 the tool might just come along and just... I've got a piece of scrap plastic I can show you on. If you're right on the edge, okay, if you're right on the edge like this and you go down, that's what you're at the risk of. You see that? Watch that again. It just rips through. Whereas if I go like this, if I come in on an angle, it will just make a mark in it. Okay, rather than ripping through. So that's what it is. That's why I come in an angle. So in an angle, just roughly 20, 30 degrees and just on the edge of the tape, make a mark. You're not after, you're not trying to, you know, draw for oil. You're not trying to get right through it. Just make it a mark. And I should think that the actual spacing would be incorrect if you do it panel by panel, but I'm not wasting time with all that. It's a bloody row of rivets at the end of the day. And they weren't there because of moulding restrictions. They could have done it with slide moulding or whatever, then we would have had moulding lines, seam lines we'd have had to get rid of. As you can see, it's not difficult. You could do this with a household, you know, a sewing needle, 
compass, pin, so you've got something to hold it in. There we go, pull the tape off, Phew. fine sander, you can see you can't see anything now, you can feel it but you can't, you can't see it. Just go over the top of the sander and they will all stick out like a little white mark and then we can just go over them again just re-establish a bit of a deeper hole just like so and as I say you can see that that alignment there isn't correct it wouldn't have been like that in real life but rather than mess around with doing each individual panel I mean if I was doing a super detailed kit with all cabling and wiring and everything I would go to the trouble of doing each individual panel and have the correct spacing but um you see the spacing is probably correct there and there we go one more there we are and then again with the sander just go over the top so now you can see those rivets along the edge and when we put it all together just like so we can now see that we've got a much better look to it all with the rivets and the lower step and everything it looks more realistic so that is one little mod I would recommend you having a go at. It's not difficult. So there we are. Right. Let's move on. So moving on. Um, <clears throat> I need to get this video finished. On that subject, I've had a few people <laughs> say that my videos are too long. I've had a load of people say that they're just right. And I've had a load of people say that they would happily sit and watch them if they were two hours long. So... Basically, I'm at the situation I can't please everyone all the time, which is a situation most of us find ourselves in at some point in our lives. So I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing. Some of your 99.9% .9 of you like the zoomed in view. I think one person complained they didn't like the zoomed in view. So I mean, I can do the zoomed in view, which is absolutely fine. OK, which is what this one person was saying, to be fair. So I'll give you the zoomed in view, which is great. Yeah. Lovely. But when I'm working on a wing, you know, I'm always out of the shot. So it's much better to not do a zoomed in view and just do like a normal view like this. If I can get the camera back correct. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Just do a view like this. And then when I'm on camera, most of the view is in the shot. So there we are. Right. So looking at sanding the leading edges, a couple of things we're going to look at here. Um, there's a little bit of a step on the way I've done it because I've pulled the top wing over the bottom and it's a little bit longer at the front. So there's a little bit of a step there, whatever. Maybe you're supposed to leave a gap at the top. I, I don't know. But if you remember, the only real positive location we had for the upper wing was the groove where it went over that, that um, spar on the back. So I glued the back and then I've worked forward. If we had a gap at the top, we would have a gap in here in our wheel bay, which would look horrible. So another thing I've learned, I'm a complete and utter idiot. Uh, I said to decide the wheel, cut, wheel by colour and spray in that area there before you put the wing together and then I've done exactly the opposite so I will have to decide and paint it before I put these in and then at least I can get the airbrush in and paint in there. Um, so looking at this leading edge we've got a step there it is what it is so I'm just looking we've got rivets here underneath okay and we've got rivets on the top here now I think we should be okay but what we can do is just come along with our tool and just make a little pin mark in those rivets on the leading edge just for this bit where we're going to be sanding just so that we know they're there should we start to sand them away so I've got 400 grit here. this is an Infini Zebra stick they're absolutely brilliant and I'm just gonna in that kind of motion just sand away the plastic to blend the top into the bottom I'm staying away from this bit here if you look it's sort of the dihedral of the wing and then it goes straight. I'm staying away from that. I'll do that separately. If you notice, I'm not going like this mad into it. I'm just gently sanding. So I keep keeping control. And you can see I'm keeping a constant 
line there I'm not making any divots because I don't want to end up with a you know the leading edge like a ploughed field I want it to be dead straight so that's why I'm using a hard zebra stick that's why I'm going in one direction and I'm working my way evenly, evenly along the wing you can go 45 degrees if you want and go like that but I find you get more a more efficient material removal by doing it like this Okay, I've still got a small step there. What you must be wary of if you start to sand, I've got a white line here because, because I've got a step. Okay, but if you're sanding something like up here, where it's all flush, if you start sanding and a white line appears, I'm hoping it does so I can show you. I don't think it's gonna. If you're sanding and a white line appears, that means you've got an area with no glue in it. So you need to be re-gluing it okay so we've still got a step there Go into the corner of that gun and there you go we can see the step is all but gone and then we can come in with a sponge this is a 1000 grit sponge Again, it's Infini. I think Infini make the best sanding products on the planet. That's just my opinion. And then we can look at this and we can see that we still have a very, very slight step there. So I'm tempted to paint some Mr. Surface on there and sand it out rather than sand any more. This side went a lot better than that side. But that's because I did this with the camera off and this with the camera on. <clears throat> so there you go. And then on this straight bit here on the leading edge, just do the same again, gently sanding, only in that area. You could leave it until you've got the wing root on, but then you have the fuselage in the way. So even if you just want to do most of it now and then come back to it later. Just sanding to get rid of that step. There we are. And then with the riveting, whether you're going to see this or not, I don't know, but if I come along where I've picked up with the riveting, got the rivet there, we've got a rivet underneath just there. And then there's that one there. So in between the two, just make a mark. And it just continues your riveting around the leading edge. And it's things like this really do step out especially if you're going to show your models you always see it people sand the leading edges and they do a beautiful job and they get a lovely seam but the rivet in line comes along and stops the panel lines come along and stop same underneath they forget to put the uh, panel lines and everything back in so we don't have any panel lines on these leading edges on this kit so so there's one there there's one there so in between the two just like that. There's one there. There's one there. In between the two, just like that. And it carries your rivet in over it. Just it just really does get you a few brownie points if you're sewing your models. And it just makes them look better. It makes them look more complete. Same here, one there. There's one there. And then one in the middle there, like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So there you are, you can see. Or you can't see, whatever the case may be. But we've got our nicely sanded. And if you're thinking about writing down on the keyboard, but you've changed the wing profile, please don't. <laughs> it's a plastic model. Um, there we go. You can see those rivets now that I've put sand and dust in them. So there we are. All done. So I'm just going to come along this end now and sand this and then we'll call it a day. So I want to show you something else as well. There was no step on the outer wing. It was only on the inner area there. 
And I've got a feeling that in my kit, let me know how you got on with yours, but I've got a feeling that in my kit, I've had an issue with shrinkage or something settling. I don't know. It seems like the upper wing panel is slightly larger than the lower wing panel. And certainly this one was, as I said before, was bowed like that. And this one was flat like that. So whether they're taking them out of the mould and stacking one on top of the other, I don't, I don't think they were. Not what I saw in the factory anyway. But no, I don't think they... Did we see them moulding the wings? I don't think we did, did we? In Les's video. But, um, you know, it's 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 par for the course. It's, it is what it is. You know, if these manufacturers treated every single kit as a one-off, they'd be 300 quid each, you know? That's what you've got to bear in mind, guys. So there we go. Right, the other thing is these gun ports. Now, I've done mine, <clears throat> so they're vastly improved. But what you want to do, get yourself a little round file, okay? If you get a file, it's like a, like a drill. If you screw it clockwise, it'll pull itself in. If you screw it anti-clockwise, it won't. So just putting the drill in there, you can see that hole is a little bit a little bit distorted and stuff. I can come over the file, turn it the wrong way. It's another good reason to not have the guns in there. And then we can get a nice round hole in the wing. Same on this one here. Turn the file the wrong way. I'm not pushing it in, I'm just letting the file do the work. If you turn it the right way, it will pull itself in. Again, nice round hole. So you can see the difference between those which I've already done and then sanded over and those they're much neater but we're probably going to put a decal over them anyway to imitate the, the red tape that goes over you can see it just cleans them up beautifully it's all about clean up and everything and also making sure we get into the corners of this little gun cover here and I've got my little Infini PE sander to get into that little gap in there and just sand in there and then get in there with that one and sand around there and then with the sponge just clean up and what I'm tempted to do now is go around with a dropper mister surfacer just as like a a guide and just go over all the edge all the way along dropper mister surfacer and then we'll sand it out and then any little imperfections the mister surfacer will take up See a bit of a step there still. And there we go. I'm sure this is getting boring as hell for you guys. So there we are. That's our wing done. So I'll carry on and do some sanding. The other thing I'm going to do offline is I'm going to fill these rivets along this spine here. I'm going to fill them with super glue and then redo them because I don't like them. Um, I may do them down the other side as well. We shall see. In fact, I may just fill them and leave them. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, like I say, I'm not knocking Airfix. I'm not whinging and bitching and moaning about this kit. I'm just saying, you know, I, I, I wish there'd been some more positive location. I think we got there in the end. I think we've got there. But uh, the time will tell. Um, because the trouble is, what we're trying to avoid is having this, when it's sat on its wheels now, when it's sat like this, when we look along it from the front, Okay, we want dihedral that's even side to side, and when it's sat on its wheels, we want the tail to be vertical. And if if we end up with this all nice and lovely dihedral wingtip to wingtips, great, but the tail's over there in the bin. So there we go. So uh, I hope you'll agree that wing route looks a lot better. The work on that bulkhead was really worth doing, and um, I know my videos are long-winded, and I know they go on and on and on. But hopefully I'm showing you stuff to look out for. And, you know, rather than just saying, oh, this is rubbish, that don't fit, that was bad, whatever. I'm sort of showing you how I'm going about fixing it and getting it so that I like it. So I hope you've enjoyed that. As I say, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.